And he said, would God give you something that would hurt you? And I said, no, it's not God. Who gets the glory by what you do? Said the father. And he says, case closed. Because I didn't want it from the devil because I've been told it's from the devil. It's rubbish. Then Peter said, can any of anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? See, there's a water after. They had received the Holy Spirit just as they have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Let's go over to chapter 19. This is an interesting one now. This is the laying on of hands. Chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, this is this, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That's interesting. They answered, no, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Remember, there's been an outpouring at Pentecost. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? He said, John's baptism, they replied. So Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one who was coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. How about that? Can you see that these disciples, the Peter who denied Christ and the John and all the other Wicos, and when they received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they become power packs. The Holy Spirit is the, it's the way to have success and empowerment in your Christian life. Come on. And Paul entered the singing of God and spoke boldly for three months. How about that? So there's a similar pattern here. These are the patterns. Number one, Believing the word and receiving the Holy Spirit. Two, there were signs and wonders present to arrest the attention of people. Thirdly, there was a physical manifestation upon believing and being baptized. Sometimes it doesn't say what it was, but there was an outpouring. They go, whoa, 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 what's this? Then there was an empowerment to live life. They were all there. They were all baptized in water. They didn't have to see a sign before they received anything. They just believed. Cornelius, he believed, and then he heard, and he received. And some were by laying on of hands. As a matter of fact, there was only two out of five times that they received the Holy Spirit by laying on of hands in Acts. Two out of five times. So there's no doctrine of laying on of hands or not laying on of hands. It's just desiring and hungering for the things of God that God will do it how he will. It doesn't matter that we don't give an opportunity for laying on of hands because we would love to lay hands and impart and pray with you for that. But if it doesn't come through, that's okay. You keep going and hungering for it and don't give up. Too many people give up. Speak it out. Go for a walk down the road. You know, I I love in the car now because of all the hands freeze. People don't know that you're talking to God. They don't think you're nutty anymore because they think you're just talking hands free. Hey, it's cool. You know, even if you don't have a hands free, you can just have fun. And people don't look at you like, you weirdo, you're the only person in the car. Ah, talking to heaven, you know. Telephone to glory. See, at the Pentecost, there were 3,000 believers. No laying of of hands. Okay? Peter and Cornelius, no laying on of hands. But then there was a laying on of hands with Paul. There was a laying of hands of Peter and John and John disciples. There's no doctrine. So I want to quickly just go through, we're running out way over time, but number one, it's the promise of the Father. In Acts 1, 4 to 5, he said, wait. Now that wait is anticipate and in expectation. You've got to be in expectation. So there's uh, things on it all, it's pretty hot over here. So you need to be hungry and constantly in prayer. Verse 14 says they were constant in prayer. They met and prayed together for 10 days. We know it's 10 days because it was the day of Pentecost. Pente is 50, 50 days after the resurrection, 40 days he taught, 10 days they were seeking the Lord. And I hope that's Jesus on the phone. In Acts, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it says there was a fulfillment of 1 verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4, he said they were all baptized. The NIV says they were filled with. Now that word with there... 
the word, the original word is en, un. And in that you can have with, you can have in, you can have a. That can be the translation. Jehovah Witness used, and Jesus was God, and Jesus was a God. All right? They put the R in because they said N. And it's not even in there. It's not even the Greek word in the original, but they put that in. But I would rather it see with God or in God. But they decide a God. But what it's saying there is that fulfillment, that baptism, the original means fully immersed like jumping in a lake. Totally immersed. Do you want to be immersed in the Holy Ghost like that? Well, you are. Full. Get full of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, quickly, it's a sign of God's power. It's an outward manifestation of what happened inwardly in your life. Charles Parham, in 1906, one of the great revivalists, he had the first theological argument and the biblical evidence of baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then there was this Jesus movement that came out and said, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. It's wrong. There were disciples here who were saved of Jesus, but they received the Holy Spirit. Pharaoh also says, speaking in tongues, he says this, should be a part of the Christian experience used in normal life and worship and not just appearing during times of religious enthusiasm. So it's not when you just get excited and we're all going, mm, you know, anytime. In December 31, 1900, Parham prayed to a lady named Agnes Osman. He laid hands on her and in three days she spoke in Chinese. But then they went and built a doctrine on that tongues is for missionaries only. For when you go out, they'll give you another language. That's one, but not all. We can do build doctrine sometimes around one verse or one of our own experience. And we can't build any doctrine on just our own experience or one experience, but we have to build it on the word of God. Third thing, it's used in evangelism. God used the tool to obtain and seize the opportunity to declare the gospel and to gain believers. And it's throughout the scriptures like that. Number four, the last one. I think it's the last one, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's the purpose is empowerment. Okay? The disciples in Peter's sermon, Peter, John, Philip, Stephen, all were empowered. They were casting out demons, seeing miracles because they received the Holy Spirit. Paul, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. This is what it says, what tongues are for. Listen to me, four things. Write these verses down. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 4. 14, verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. You want to know what tongues are for? The number one and two, it says there, that Paul says it edifies self and the church. Right there, there's two things. It edifies you, it edifies the church. But it says there, you should interpret in the church so others may understand. Hear that. If there's a tongue breaks out here, it says that we should be quiet and wait for the interpretation to come. And if that doesn't come, the person should be quiet. All right? But you've heard it here. And then you should be quiet and praying for your interpretation to come through so you would bring it through in English. We've got to do it in order. The third thing you write down, the tongues are for, in Romans 8, write this down, Romans 8, 26 to 37. Romans 8, 26 to 37, it says the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with moans and groans that we do not understand. So it's a personal thing, yeah? And then the fourth thing in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, write that one down. Then you can tell anyone, these are what the four tongues are about. It's not just for one, for the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 22, it says to the unbelievers. So it's to those who, like in Pentecost and that, you know, they, they heard their own language, it says, some commentaries say that only the 12 stood up. Well, no, I don't believe that because there was more than 12 people groups. I think it was 14 people groups represented on that time. And 14 people groups represented every language of the earth at that time. And they came together and it was actually the Tower of Babel being reversed. Where they were spread, they were brought together by God. It's quite amazing. So it's an empowering world where we experience continuing fillings, boldness, courage, joyfulness in our lives, confidence, and so we can go out and do the Great Commission. If you're, if you're, if you're lacking boldness, pray in tongues. 
Seek the things of the Spirit. Pray in the tongues as you drive around. Pray in tongues as you walk. You can do it hours a day. Just let the Spirit of God just talk and just let, let, let yourself go. You know, it's amazing. I can do that and still think. It's crazy. You can think in English and go, that's great fun. But it builds you up, edifies you. The word filling there means filled, means reoccurring of primary filling. Did you know that? Reoccurring of primary filling. There's so many Christians who we're talking about one other time. We all get this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit when we're baptized in the Spirit, but how many refillings have we have? Are we getting filled every day to the brim? Are we overflowing from the innermost being will flow rivers of living water poured out? Cut some things out. We need to speak in tongues as much as possible. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a gift to empower you to do more than you've ever done before. Do you want that gift? If you've got that gift, are you exercising the gift to the max? Because that's our role. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, You will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. It's God's promise of power to you and to me as Christians. You know, we can live by faith, and I know there's a lot of Christians around the world that have accepted the, the Jesus Christ and they've become born again and then they live and they have tremendous faith. You know, I was one that lived by faith when I was born again for four or five years. And I lived by a faith principle, but I didn't know about this baptism that is so empowering. You never walked away from the Lord once you receive that. It's not from the devil. Don't be afraid. And the fruit is, chapter 19, verse 6, it says they prophesied. Chapter 10, verse 46, they were praising God. 2, verse 11, says they declared wonders of God. 1 Corinthians 14 says they edified the believer. How can you say it's from the devil? Hear me now. You need to learn this stuff. You need to get the CD. You need to get into So when you're talking to other churches that are out there and they're Christians, brothers and sisters, that will try to turn you against the baptism of the Holy Spirit in tongues, you need to show them some scriptures and have them in the back of your Bible and say, can I talk to you about this one? It's there. He wants to lavish gifts upon us according to your faith and your hunger for it. Don't let it stop. Go out your backyard. Go for a walk. God, bring it upon me, Father. I want it, Lord. Speak something out. Whatever you feel, whatever word comes in, you think, oh, man, I remember the first thing I heard. I thought, I'm just saying that. That's me. And all these things, and the enemy just plays with you. That's you. That's just you doing that, you know, gibberish, you know. Who stole me rubber gumboots in the Hyundai, you know? That's not it. You've just got to keep our faith and just believe for it, and God will add another word, and the next one will just flow, and I'll tell you what, there'll be an empowerment like you've never experienced, and God will just come upon you with new freshes every day. I encourage you to continue to speak in tongues. If you're here this morning and you, and you haven't received your baptism in the Holy Spirit, I would love to pray with you, and somebody will pass this well. And we want to just pray again, and we believe for you that you'll receive that, but it's up to you to go out in power and really seek it. Amen? Is that good?